welcome back to the channel. My name is Kevin. I'm Tarsha. And this is, of course, Conversations with the Crawleys, where we have conversations about faith, family relationships, and recaps of some of our favorite shows. And this one is all about Married at First Sight. So if this is a conversation that you enjoy, if this is uh, going to be helpful to you, um, and we do also provide relationship tips, so check those out. But make sure you're hitting that subscribe button, hit the like, and request notifications, and <laughs> share. There we go. All right. So uh, we are, the couples have been together for now, what, two weeks? Two whole weeks. So, you know, it's 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 starting to get real for them. Oh, like real, real. Real, for real, for real. All right. So uh, let's just kick it off uh, with Ryan and Brett. Right. Not a lot going on with them, but he they do kind of just have, before the um, housewarming that they are, mm -hmm. that everyone is having this week, they have some times with their own friends, right? Um, and so he talks to his friends about, you know, some of the things that he's noticed with her as far as some of her phobias, mm -hmm. her her idiosyncrasies, whatever right. it might be. Um, but she is definitely attracted to him. Oh, yeah. She indicates that. I think they share that with Pastor the Cow came. Mm -hmm. So I feel like there's attraction there and they're really working on trying to get beyond the friend zone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they do have their um have their house warming. Right. Um, and some of both their friends. She brings all of her female friends. Right. He brings one guy friend. Right. Um, her female friends are all married. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, she's now brought into the number of being married. Correct. Right. Right. Um, and the interesting thing was that they kind of pick up on the thing that I think we've kind of mentioned is that he's not very open with his feelings. Mm. Well, he's reserved. Very. You know, and so I think with her being a lot outgoing, mm -hmm. it can just, that shows up in a relationship who's the more outgoing True. person. So. True. So, um, but he he is not necessarily, she's like, oh, I want to have my friends over all the time. I want to be with my friends. Da, yeah, da, da. Like, like, nah. No. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Not, not all the time. Not all the time. Not gonna happen. We, we don't need mm -mm. to give all the time. Yeah. Which makes sense, right? When you're when you're the introvert, you're not right. the very outgoing. It's like I like to have people over, but that can be occasionally, not full time. So I think they're gonna really have to speed up. Like he's indicated, like we have to be patient, but we don't have enough time. Right. And he needs to share more often about where he's at and what he wants to do. Because he wants, he's more physical, right? He wants right. to like, look, let's get to it. We married. Let's, let's, let's right. test out everything, right? Let's, right. Right. Keep, let's the keep the tires on everything, right? <laughs> basically, basically, that's what he's saying. Keep the tires. Let's, let, let's, let's make sure everything's sure compatible and everything. Everything's every every working area. out, right? Uh, <laughs> and she is more like, I want to make sure that that doesn't get in the way. So they have to find that balance. It has to be a balance. Um, because within this eight week process, if there's any questions left unanswered for either one of them, right. it could be a deal breaker. Right. Right. So we'll see. Um, any predictions on them so far? I mean, I feel like they should make it to the end. I mean, we still got several weeks to go. Right. Um, but again, I feel like they have a good foundation. They may need to speed it up and have more serious conversations right. more often. So far from the way they filmed or cut it, we can't really tell how deep. It doesn't sound like they're getting really deep enough mm -hmm. to make any type of decisions in eight weeks, but they do need to speed up. Yeah, absolutely. So. All right, and then the couple, uh, let's go with Johnny and Bao. Yeah, let's go with Johnny and Bao. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, she starts off, as far as their segments, she starts off talking with one of her friends. Right. And at first she was like, you know, when I saw him, it was like, Oh my God, Johnny the frat boy, Johnny the party boy, Johnny right. this. They were in college, right. so yeah. That's what she knew him right. as, that's right. right. But she also starts to realize some of the reasons that they might have been matched, mm -hmm. that they were put together. So yeah. she, you know, she has to kind of, in some respects, get out of her head. Right. Because she's she's got this, uh, this dichotomy, if you will, of this is what I knew and this is what I'm experiencing. Right. So, well, and then I think anything, because when you're in that stage, you're in your early 20s, mm -hmm. you know, late teens, I mean, you have to hope that that person has grown. Right. And it sounds like he's not that frat boy anymore. No. So I think 
she does. I think she came to a conclusion very quickly. This right. is not college anymore. Right. And he's not acting like he's still in college. Exactly. So. Exactly. So, but then she also tells her friend that if anyone jumps out of the relationship, and here we go with the, the foreboding, right? They they are like setting up the, the foreshadowing of everything that's about to happen in these episodes, right? <laughs> uh, so she tells her friends, if anybody jumps out of this relationship, yeah, it's, it's going to be Johnny. Well, she mentioned in the episode before, she felt like she was more emotionally mature mm -hmm. than Johnny. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know if it's a foreshadowing. She's just kind of like, if anyone had to go and had to bet who was going to lead the relationship first, right. she's saying it's him, which means, again, I feel like she's more confident that if they can work out their differences, mm -hmm. they'll make it. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I think if we look at because they do go, the guys have a meeting with just the guys mm -hmm. and the ladies have a... a time with just the ladies right? right um and so in that conversation though um the question comes up to johnny because they you know they of course they're all comparing notes right who's consummated who's not right, right. We'll, we'll talk about the couple that lied right or the right. person that lied right <laughs> um but they they will you know they are comparing notes and everything and right. so um the look on johnny's face kind of lets you know that something's not right with him right right and so the question kind of gets pressed on him well look are you attracted to her right and he does the, mm. right? And they're like somewhat, and they're like, "Oh no, you you ain't gonna leave us with that." Right? What does that mean? Like, are you physically attracted? Like, okay, you are physically attracted, but she's not your type, right. you know, in other ways. So they're and they're trying to encourage him, mm -hmm. and they give it time and to work through it and be patient. Yeah, you know. So and I think that you know, I think everybody has their type. Let's just be honest, right? Everybody has a type. Oh right? yeah, yeah. Um, but I think it, what he has to grow beyond is okay. If all of my type has always led me to not go anywhere, mm -hmm. maybe just maybe someone who is not technically my type might be something that might be what works this time, right? Yeah, but I don't think he's being more self-aware about that. He's True. just so absorbed about what is his type mm -hmm. and the red flags he's getting. Right. You know, that it's really put him off that mm -hmm. he can't see beyond that. Yeah. Um, but at the end, after they had their, you know, um, housewarming party. Well, even before that, though, he does even acknowledge the fact that he's like me. He has this big crying moment of maybe he wasn't ready to get married. He's like, I, you know, I had all the right intentions, all the right reasons, but maybe I wasn't ready. Yeah. Right. And I think everyone may feel that way at some point. Like, was I really ready for this? Mm -hmm. Because when you're in the very emotional about how you're reacting to something and yeah. how people are responding to you, I think everybody may have had that question at times, you know, from like, oh, I feel real confident. And then when you get married, you're like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it, I mean, it's magnified at this level because. Oh, definitely. Because they're strangers. Right. So, I mean, like, that comes maybe a little bit longer when you're married. Like, oh, was I really ready for this? Or was yeah. I ready for kids? I mean, like, it's always that question right. yourself. But for me, I think what I felt like is the best part is when after. Mm -hmm. the housewarming mm -hmm. and they're like getting ready for bed they're in bed and they're talking right. and so and i'm sorry this is a spoiler alert for anyone who wants to get married oh my gosh we have to take effort in being <laughs> married and guess what there's not sparks all the time right. and we're not gonna feel like for them it's very short but like we don't feel that love at this moment and mm -hmm. we're gonna have to put effort into our marriage right guess what we'll make it if we continue to put effort i feel happy at this moment because you're gonna have times where you feel happy you're in the moment mm -hmm. i love being married and then there's times like crap i feel nothing yeah and this uh, is this gonna work are we gonna make it oh my god life is horrible but then something happened and I'm like, yes, this is real marriage right here. This yeah. thing is real marriage. Yeah. And so I think people have to get out of the head of this mystery, mysterious thing about what marriage is and mm -hmm. all this. I just want to be with someone full time. Right. And they're going to love me and I'm going to love them. Because listen, that, that lasts for a hot minute. Just, right. Yeah.
if we're honest, right? It, 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 it does. I mean, not saying, you know, it, but marriage is effort. Marriage is yeah, work, right? It is. And yeah, do you have moments of spark? When you first got married, there's sparks and there's, mm-hmm. everything's flying. And then you settle into life. And at times you could be married and you're like, I don't feel nothing. That right. doesn't mean you leave the marriage. You have to keep putting that effort in. Right. And so when I saw that moment and they realized like, oh, we can make it. We can get through this. And now I feel happy. I enjoy the time. Uh, Hello. Right. That's that's marriage right there. Yeah. So, so. predictions on Johnny and Bao? I still feel like they can make it. Um, Johnny needs to get out his edge. Yeah. She needs to make sure she stays fully engaged when he's not engaged. I mean, that's another thing about being married. Yeah. Because sometimes you don't feel like you're engaged, and I'm like, oh, I'm ooh, ah. and then opposite, you're like, yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> those sound effects there, please. <laughs> and then at the game, we're like, oh. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I am, you know, if if Johnny gets, like you said, gets out of the way, Johnny right now is, in my opinion, self sabotaging more oh, than. Yeah. Than Val. Oh, yeah. Not saying that Val does. Val. Yeah, I really Val, am. Listen, you go back to one of the first ones that we did. I was like, Val is. When she was in the hotel getting ready and she was like, he is not a Nobel okay. Prize winner, I'm not doing it. <laughs> so I, I'm more now pointing the finger at Johnny. Right. And recognizing that, yes, Johnny's got to figure out what he wants, figure out a lot of things. But if, I think, if, if this marriage does fail, it's going to be more on Johnny than Bao. Yeah, we can talk about Bao's hygiene. Yeah, we can talk about her, some of the other things as far as her, but Johnny is the one who seems to be, um, whether, you know, it's real, it's unintentional, I think. Oh, um, yeah. But it's subconsciously, he is, he right. is co- pushing a wedge in here. So, right. and they did get a book that Bao was like, listen, let's go ahead and make sure you use that book. They got a book on, how to please her, you know, a woman, her, her, her papaya. Yeah. So that's he, a new one. And he's like, I don't eat pata- papaya. Well, it's uh, not you, like you want to start eating papaya. You're about to have some fruit salad for sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Listen. All right. So uh, let's talk about uh, Rachel and Jose. Okay. So first of all, they do start going garden shopping, flower shopping. Yes. He need to let go yeah. and let God. Yeah. That's 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 how I'm gonna put him. Let go and let God. Um, he's just been single too long, and he doesn't realize it. And she's gonna have to speak up. Yes, a lot quicker. Yeah, a lot quicker. She makes the statement early on. She's like, I wouldn't say he's controlling. So hear me. Anytime somebody says, I wouldn't say that they're this. They're really saying that they are that, yeah, right? Yeah. So she's saying, I wouldn't say he's controlling. He just plans everything out. Well, yes. He wants it to go according to the script that he mm-hmm. has in his head. Mm-hmm. And so, therefore, you can say it's not controlling, but mm-hmm. he's trying to control the narrative. Mm-hmm. He's trying to control how things go, mm-hmm. consciously or subconsciously. Mm-hmm. And, yes, she's going to have to make a decision whether or not she's going to be okay with that. Mm-hmm. You know, and he's, he's even... Yeah, yeah, I, so there was even some moments, and let me know what you think about this, because there were some things that I was looking at, it's like, yeah, that's a little suspect as far as how he does it, because, it, and it's subtle, because what he did was, um, she would ask about that, and he was like, ah, you don't want that, right? And then he would say, well, what do you think about it? So he would kind of put the negative image in her head mm-hmm. that you don't want this, mm-hmm. and then make it seem like they were making a decision mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. that they weren't going to get it. Yep. So he was doing that a lot. And yep. so he he has this subtle way mm-hmm. of, of controlling even their decisions mm-hmm. by putting the negative thought mm-hmm. that he doesn't want it, but mm-hmm. then trying to come back and make it seem like we're, we're doing this together, right? Yep. Oh, you picked up on that too? Well, not until you said it, okay. but I'm like, yeah, you're right. Yeah. I mean, I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. And she, like I said, she's going to need to speak up and say, no, if we're going to both cook. Mm-hmm. I want this. Right. And guess what? You're going to have to accept that this is my right. decision. Right. So, yeah. Yeah. So then they do have their housewarming, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and he's, they talk with the family, of course, about their big issue, which is money and budget, right? Right. And he, he kind of says some things that are almost dismissive of how she wants to approach some things. Correct. 
because she, we know she wants to travel and enjoy okay. life with him mm-hmm. as her husband. Right. He wants to save and put money aside. Right. And then if there's anything left over, right. then maybe we'll go on a trip around the corner. Mm-hmm. Right? <laughs> around the corner because he ain't trying to go nowhere. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, of course, with the family, this is where I was like, okay, you really got problems. He brings out that budget board. See, and I wouldn't bring out the board. First of all, that's nobody else's business. Right. You know, the family don't need to see your credit score or how much we have in bills. If you want to say, I have a good credit score, I budget well, Mm -hmm. I have enough savings and everything, then say that. Yeah. You don't have to bring that board out. Right. Don't bring that board out. Because it's 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 uh, it's braggadocious. He's oh. bragging about it. Oh yeah. Um, but it also again it's a sore spot right now for his wife. Right. So again, you're you're doing things that are not helping to build a relationship with her. Mm-hmm. Yes, y'all are probably great in bed. Y'all are great with you, the PDAs, what mm-hmm. have you. But this is an area that he's got to put some effort into saying, okay. Let's figure out how we can come to a, an agreement on this and find some balance. And she, that only comes through her communicating. True. Like, um, since, she, and, and, and make it about him. Mm-hmm. Since you're so good at this, I know you can figure out, figure a, way out a way to get us to Europe. To get us to Europe mm-hmm. within a year. Yep. I already told you I can keep my car yep. another year. So since you're so smart and you've done this well, baby, show off for me. Just tell me how we can get this thing. Oh, make it all. Just smooth it all down. Show me, baby. Tell me how we can get there. Wow. And how fast and how cheap we can get there. Again, hello. Whatever whatever he needs to be communicated, but she right. needs to communicate it. She that, does. I am exaggerating, but you know. No, you're not. <laughs> <laughs> you're not. <laughs> Just a little tip for y'all ladies. <laughs> so, but whatever it takes to say, you know what? Mm-hmm. If we're going to stay together and I have to make a decision in the next six weeks, yep. buddy, and you like all the other stuff I'm bringing to the table, fit it in yep. and get over it. Yeah. So. Yeah. But again, because he's so controlling, I don't know that that'll happen. Or she so becomes passive. yeah passive. I want to be submissive, however you want to put it. Yeah, you know, um, she keeps saying I don't want to lose something, but if you never had it, how are you losing something you never had? Right. Because if you've never been, you know, she says she's worked on herself, but it's continually. You have to continually work on it. You have to continually right. voice yourself to feel comfortable. And and I just thought about when you said that she's working on herself, but remember she she got out of a relationship not too long ago. And she's lost some weight. And so so it's almost as if there's a shell that she's still kind of emerging from. Oh, yeah. And she's not, she, uh, the immediate imagery, this is how I think sometimes, but the immediate imagery was a, uh, a butterfly emerging from the cocoon. So she's still doing that, but she mm-hmm. still does not have to spread her wings. Right. And it's funny how they put her with someone who still has a controlling nature. Right. So, right, right. So if I'm telling you I've been in a controlling situation and I didn't have a, enough voice, right? Then you put me with a mate that is not more patient and allow me to speak and mm-hmm. want to know my opinion, right? That's interesting. Yeah. Well, again, these producers are doing a phenomenal job. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be the expert, not the producer. Well, y'all know. All right. So Mirla and Gil. So. We start off with them. We see this great moment mm-hmm. where she's sitting out. looks like maybe a little cafe or whatever. He pulls up in the fire truck, EMS truck, whatever, um, and sees her. She comes over, gives a kiss. Yes, it was staged. We get it, right? What kind of kiss? I missed this. Uh, I'm sorry. She she comes up, and it would have been a great time for a kiss, okay, right? Okay, that's what I thought. If I, I had scripted it, she would have kissed him, right? Yeah, because but, I'm like, you come. Oh, it's so sweet. You checking on me. You're in a fire truck. Right. I mean, like, come on. Right. I mean, it looks like he was looking for a kiss. Didn't right. He was all head out. <laughs> he going to be looking for a while. Puppy eyes. And she goes, hi. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hi. Yeah. He's I think she does at least touch his hand. I mean. Yeah, she rubs his arm. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that's all you get, buddy. Right. He ain't getting nothing else, right? So, but they are doing the budget, right? And so here's the thing that's been kind of a key thing with them is we know Mirla likes to spend money. 
right? Mm-hmm. And it's not like and, and it's not like she spends money like water, but she likes the finer things, right? Right. But they start comparing their finances. Mm-hmm. And we don't see numbers, but the impression that we get, Mirla's Mirla's doing okay. She got nice little savings. She's her bills are taken care of, what have you. Gil, though. Gil got his money in the Cayman Islands or somewhere. He got his his money. <laughs> Cayman. He got it in Colombia. What do you saying he's sending his his money to his mama? Yeah. Is what he, <laughs> talking about. She's like, this is a real savings account. Like if 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 I needed to bury you today, I could pull money from Colombia. Is what you saying? Right. Is it worth and it's worth more money in Colombia than in the U.S. Right. <laughs> is it pesos? I don't know we, what it is. We can get a house in in, in Colombia, but we ain't getting a house here in the U.S. <laughs> and and I can put my part in. Go ahead. Okay, because I got to get this off of my mind. Go ahead. You'll need to keep his mouth closed about her money. I'm sorry, because when he looked at her savings, she he was like, oh. That's a huffy. Oh, that's a good saving. And then she was like, he's like, oh, you can buy anything you want. Because he's like, well, how much is when you spend stuff? She was like, well, my credit card works all the time. And I pay it off at the end of the month. You don't carry no debt. She carries no debt. Listen. So keep your mouth closed. Yeah. Keep your mouth closed about her shoes, her purse, whatever she got in her closet. Because she has no debt. So it's not like she's swimming in debt. Where some women, and period, anybody has seventy, eighty thousand dollars worth of debt because of the stuff they buy. Right. She pays it off, and she still has savings. So she acts in the manner of her life supposed to be. So you gonna have to come up to put money for us to buy a house. Yeah, she's like, oh, we ain't gonna get a house anytime soon. We're not getting a house anytime soon. We're definitely not getting in these eight weeks. So. Exactly. So you worried about me going a couple times a week? Yeah. And my stuff in order. Yeah, so Gil needs to never ask again about how much her lashes cost, Thank how you. much shoes cost. I'm gonna just say it because look, you. he's not he's not adding value to her financial situation. Thank you. She's not looking to him for any finances. It looks like Thank except you. to help buy the house. Thank you. But Gil needs to keep his mouth closed about that. And can we just be honest? Gil needs to keep his mouth closed. Period. Because Gil <laughs> runs off at the mouth. Everybody knows his lot. business. Everybody knows his business. So at the at the session, of course, like we mentioned, Johnny and Bao, or at the the guy session, Johnny was talking about his feelings towards Bao and mm-hmm. what have you. And it's like he gets home from that that uh, outing, and immediately is like, I gotta tell, you know, well, tell Mirla. I mean, you, I mean, when you have the conversations, you're gonna tell like this is some of the things you were surprised about. Yeah. And me, it's more about him and Mirla. True. True. And sharing everything happened with Pastor Cal. Sharing how he felt about how with the cookies when they were at the honeymoon. Well, Those but, are the things. but here's the thing. I think I think that there is a little bro code in there. If 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 I just mean this is my friend, right? Mm-hmm. And I don't know you I know you're friends with the spouse, right? Mm-hmm. And if I know that there's some problems now. Because we've been together for so long and we have couples that we've been together, been friends with for a long time. There are things that I I know that may have happened with our, our friends mm-hmm. that I don't immediately come and tell you. Right. Because there are other things that happen with your your friends that uh, that they tell you that you don't immediately tell me. Right. We compare notes when it's like, yeah, something's not right there. Right. What ha- we There are times where we compare notes. But at this stage, they're two weeks in as far as married. Everybody just met each other three weeks ago, basically, if we're honest. Well, two weeks ago, if we're honest, right? Well, then what would you keep? Why would you have a code to the point? Well, I'd have it from the aspect of that I don't know if Mirla is going to go back and share with Bao because that's his truth to tell to, Mir- to, to Bao. That's for Johnny to tell to Bao, right? But needless to say, here's the thing. Y'all let us know what you think in the comments if you agree with me or if you agree with my wife or we both wrong. All right. But he is a gospel because he does talk a lot about what's going on with Mirla too. Right. right? That's what I'm focused on right now. True. I can I can see because we don't know how much he should. He could have just did that and felt like that and, and say anything else. Like, like he it. was crying and sucking his finger or anything like that. <laughs> sucking his finger. And <laughs> hugging Jose in a in the closet outside yeah. over what's going on. He could have mentioned all that. So as far as we know, I think he said he's had they're having problems. So right. trust me. 
if that's all he mentioned, I think he's good there. What okay. I'm really more concerned about is you telling everything that happened past the cow. You about to tell her, you know, guys, I'm going to get a divorce. She will marry me, uh, yeah. kiss me in eight weeks and all that. You don't have to share all that. Yeah. He, he you know, and of course, uh, again, he's talking about her closet, right? Right. And, and again... He ain't got nothing to talk about. He ain't, nothing to talk about. <laughs> he ain't contributed to it. And you could tell it could get this could get a little hurtful with the the keep on with the banter about right. her being bougie and she's like asking them how. And that's when we were talking early. Like, why are we calling her bougie? If I'm I'm looking at what she keeps saying, she's like, I make more than enough money to cover what I need to do. Right. If I'm making more than enough money and I like certain things and I buy it occasionally. That's me. And right. she just proved that. Right. Now, if she came off and she got 100000 in credit card debt for those shoes. That's a whole other we issue. We would be having a different conversation. Right. But she should have put her foot down there and like, so don't say nothing else. If I'm lost. Until you, until you come up with Columbia. Until that come up. In US and in peso or whatever the denomination is. Don't you say that thing. Okay. Because I would look at him crazy. like, oh, we want to give numbers? Okay, okay. be quiet. <laughs> so, and then he does have an opportunity to talk with uh, one of her friends, one of her male right. friends, right? Right. Um, and from that conversation, though, the friend was like, yeah, I haven't really seen her do a lot of PDAs in previous relationships. Right, you've known her for 18 years? I think it was eight years. Was it 18 years? I thought it was like 18. So, it's, it, but it's been a while, right? It's been a long time. But, that's that doesn't bode well. It doesn't. But let's look at it from the, this aspect. What, well, all right, what aspect are we looking from? What if this is a wake up call for guilt? Because if he's been used to women being all over him, and swooning him, and he a firefighter, now he's not getting anything. Could that be just a really like shocker for him that someone can control themselves concerning him? Like, if he, you know what I'm saying? Like, before, like, oh, women's always, they're swooning. Like, oh, you're fired by There's oh, you're a so difference muscular. between her, let's say, jumping his bones mm -hmm. day one mm -hmm. and not even giving him a peck. Okay. Right? Yeah. There's, there's a big difference there. There's a big gap. No one's saying that at this point that they definitely should have been, you know, consummated mm -hmm. and. And be, you know, tonguing each other down every five seconds like Jose and Rachel. All right. No one's saying that. But the fact that there are no... <laughs> no kisses. No kisses. Not even a peck. Not a peck. It's, it's I think a it's problem. It's so natural to be affectionate. And I'm not like an overly affectionate person. Right. But I'm like, you should be a naturally like, you know, this is a good time to kiss. Like, right. I'm going to kiss you because I just feel it, you know. Right. So, and they say that they're attracted to each other. But... It's hard to tell. I think he's, he's on her end. On her end. I think he is attracted to her. Mm -hmm. um, but he, you know, he talks a lot, right? She is, a. I don't know that she's attracted to him. But then again, we don't know what, a, no one seems to know what an attraction for her feels like or looks like. Because her friend is saying, I ain't seen her do no PDAs in the uh, however many number of years that we've known each other, right? Yeah. Our friends, our friends know that we're affectionate towards each other. It's not like we're just jumping each other every five seconds in Ooh. front of people. Our, the friends that we have. Oh, I don't know. I don't, I don't think they would say we were overly affectionate. Right. I'm not saying overly affectionate. Like I said, not like we're we're tonguing each other down. What have you? This is maybe a little too much conversation, right? But this is what we do. <laughs> but but we don't, you know. But there is still the hand holding. There is still those other things that people would know. Okay. There's there's some there's some affection there, right? They're looking at them like mm, I don't know. I don't know. If they're looking at him. Gills were always expressing it. We haven't kissed. We right. haven't kissed because she does rub them. They are close, so I wouldn't say necessarily they don't see it. But when he mentions that, and he's like, "Well, y'all haven't kissed at all," or you gave him a you know you gave him a kiss a kiss at it. At the, the wedding, at the wedding on the mm -hmm. cheek, have y'all progressed since mm -hmm. then? So I can't say people are not not seeing it. They're having to ask them the question, like, "Hey, have y'all gone beyond that point?" Because right. how they started, right? So, all right, so we'll see. We'll see. 
But he said, and again, if he don't get a kiss in eight him. weeks, I deuces, believe him. Yeah, and, and, and I don't blame him. I don't him. disagree. I don't disagree with I don't that. Blame him. I think in eight weeks you can't peck me. I mean, like I kiss my dog on the nose, and I'm like, because it's like, oh, I'm trying to show you that. You know no, what I'm I, saying? No, I get it. I get it. I get it. So he can't even, and she don't like the dog, so that right. might be his sign. Yeah. So, all right, and now Zach and Michaela who last week she had that moment with the Clorox wipes or whatever it was yeah. with the cleaning supplies. Um, so they pick up and she actually left after their meeting with Cal. Right. She with left Pastor again. Cal, right. Right. Um, because after the meeting with Pastor Cal, it looked like, okay, they at least had the ability to figure out why, you know, some of the things there's still some work to be done, but for her to leave completely again, it shows the the hypocrisy of what she said when they first had the conversation about how they would handle the fights and how she's responding. And then they talk, and he's like, so Zach was like, hold on, I thought it was, he said he thought it was resolved. Right. So it sounded like he was feeling better Mm -hmm. after it, Mm -hmm. but then she doubled down. To me, it's like doubling down. Yeah. And she's like, "Mm." Yeah, because she not only left, Right, mm-hmm. but then she said, "I'm not doing the housewarming." Mm-hmm. Like, and so he's talking to his friend, like, "Look, this is this is feeling right. too familiar." Right, I done had some crazies before, right. and she's coming off that way. Right, um, but then she evidently changed her mind and did do the housewarming, mm-hmm. and she set it up. It looks like, mm-hmm. um, but he's saying, "Look, I see the rash decisions. I see red flags." Right, it's like she's like, "I'm like, I got an anxiety coming here." Like he saw his car burning again or something. Like <laughs> he saw his car keyed, his, his clothes all cut up. Right. Like he been through some trauma. Like he got right. some PTSD. Because <laughs> she says it was that her reaction was an overreaction, which that's the understatement of the year so far. I mean, the aggressiveness to be at that level for someone you don't know. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there is some other triggers there. Something happened in her past that, like, opened P- Pandora's Who box. hurt you, Michaela? Who hurt you? I don't you? know. But she, like, if it was a person that was on that table, they would lost their head. I mean, based <laughs> off of you, if you just looked at the film, they were like, oh, we're about to go yeah. blow a house up or yeah. something. That's that's how it just felt. It felt intense. Oh, I yeah. felt the, the tension. Yeah. So now he's coming back like, uh, this is a red flag. All my other relationships were like this. I got anxiety. I can't I feel like I can't be here. Mm-hmm. I'm like, dude, what happened to you? And her self-awareness is a little concern for me because she makes the statement. She says she bites her tongue. Well, you didn't bite your tongue last week when you called him a GDMF liar, right? No. And I don't think it's self-awareness. I think she tries to, she's, the best way I could put it in layman's term, two-faced it. I want to show a good appearance that I do the right thing Mm -hmm. when really I do the opposite of what I should do. I know what to do and I'm pretending like, because like when she was talking to the ladies, I'm like, you're not going to talk about you had a fight. Because you had abandonment issues with your right. daddy and you acted out and you took all your stuff mm-hmm. and you left. And a lot of times we do that because we don't feel safe. We we mm-hmm. don't want people to judge us. Speaking of, because remember also, Michaela lied about them being intimate. Yes. She didn't want to. She like, didn't oh, want to admit that they the had, yeah, had consummated. And I'm like, but you were saying you were all open when the strippers were in front of you and you throwing money. So we would expect for you to say yes, because I would have called her on it. I'd be like, hold on, sister girl. You were throwing money on them men. Like, once you get your man, it was all on. So you're going to tell me in my face, because I would have got out. I was like, you're going to tell me in your face. You didn't do nothing? That's very hard to believe. Okay, okay. All right, let's just let's yeah. be real. So, you know, yes. So um, <laughs> they are, yeah, I... They they don't have the benefit or the value of having that honeymoon time, so they lost out on that. They lost, and we get sh- it's shown. It's it's impacting. It definitely okay. is impacting. If you know, I would I would have hoped 
what would have probably been better mm -hmm. would be if they still sent them on a honeymoon by themselves. Mm -hmm. Just away. Away. Even if it was, look, uh, okay, then he's going to go down to, to some, you know, one of the little islands off the, you know, or whatever. Right. Go someplace. Right. Just a resort someplace. Right. To give them that time where they still have the ability to interact as a couple without the pressure of everything else going on, right? They had a production schedule. True. So and I get that they couldn't, COVID. but it would have been better. I think they 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 would have gained something they from it. From, oh, yeah. Right? They would have benefited from it. So. So. Mm. So, yeah. So he is like, yeah, I don't feel comfortable. I don't feel it's like It's almost like I don't feel safe. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> If I blink two times. Right. <laughs> right. He yeah. probably look at the camera before you go to bed. No joke. Running Nothing's either. happening. Leave the camera Leave running. The camera Leave the cameras running. rolling. If something happens, <laughs> send <laughs> right. <laughs> Listen. So he was like, I don't feel I don't feel, you know, right. I don't feel no. safe is really what I think he was trying to say. Uh, <laughs> I I mean, I know we're joking, but at the same time, it's like, I feel for people who are single mm -hmm. and really experience some really hardships and trying to find the right relationship. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate, like for him, I feel like he's really had some really serious, been through some serious things with women to cause him to, to create such an anxiety. Right. And then for her... Whatever loss of trust she's learned, right. you know, it's like have she lived with someone before and they just walked out and grabbed all her stuff, his right. stuff and left, right? And now that's bringing up all this inner pain, um, and so I feel for them, but at the same time, they're taking it out on the wrong people, right? Right. So I think they definitely going to have to have some more sessions. Yes. So he leaves the apartment, um, and then he that's. Slowly. Well, they slowed it down. I, he probably was running. But all right. But yes. So he leaves the apartment. We'll pick up again with them next week. Um, but um, I. What's your predictions about them now? So my predictions are this is that I think that they will be, that they will make it to the end. Mm -hmm. But I don't know how much further after that they'll make it. I don't think they're going to make it to him. He's so negative, too. It's like, we're. What if you don't recover from this? What yeah. if it never happens? But I, I think that I think that they have. I think they're always gonna for their relationship. They're gonna have this almost tumultuous, and I I don't know that he'll completely push it away in the eight weeks. I think after eight weeks, he'll probably be like, okay, this is this is a crazy beyond just having cameras in your face all the time. Because we've seen this all also where couples have stayed together, but because and then after the cameras are gone, they realize okay that wasn't just stress. Mm -hmm. You cray cray for real. Mm -hmm. And some have done well and they've done right. terrible in front of cameras. Right. And Once generally. the cameras left, they they worked out fine. Yeah, and but also some of them said they stayed in counseling to help mm -hmm. them, you know, just to continue to grow as a couple. Yeah. But again. That's you put in 100% effort, everyone doing what they need to do. Right. So. so, all right. We'll see. But let us know what you think in the comments. Let us know if we missed any things. Let us know your conspiracy theories because we know y'all got them. All right. And that's <laughs> it. we checking up on. All right. So let us know. Um, and we'll see you next time. Have a great one. Be blessed. Bye.